Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Pelvic Pulse podcast. You guys, we have Mary Catherine here with us. I'm going to read her bio because it is so good, so in-depth, and it will give you great context for where we're going to go today in this episode, which I'm, I couldn't be more excited about. Okay. Mary Catherine Charette is a feminine embodiment guide, ceremonial facilitator, author of the book Home, and creator of the feminine embodiment practice V. Through feminine frameworks and nurturing immersive containers, Mary Catherine guides people to lovingly and effectively strip away societal masks and religious programming, establish a profound connection with love, and reconnect with the instinctual nature of their animal bodies. At the heart of Mary Catherine's offerings is her signature method, movement method, I should say, V, a somatic-based practice tailored for women seeking more depth from their movement experience. This unique practice utilizes primal movement, sound, and vocal toning to seamlessly link and affirm the connection between women's pelvic floors to their voices. The distinctive sequencing of V effectively guides women to drop out of their minds, release stress and holding, and connect with their bodies where true gnosis resides. We'll talk about what that means in a second. As a result of practicing V, women experience greater access to pleasure, increased intimacy with self and others, heightened creativity and embodied self-trust, and self-trust. When Mary Catherine is not holding space for embodiment and integration, she can be found spending time with friends and community, drumming, at hot yoga, staying up to date on emergent psychedelic, sound therapy, and somatic research, and jumping into Barton Springs in Austin, Texas. Woo! Yeah! (laughs) Welcome to the show, Mary Catherine. I just can't call you by your full name, though. I have to call you MC. I'm sorry. (laughs) Please. Yes, MC. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so excited to have you here. You are just, oh my God. Just reading your bio again. I'm like, you've been to places. I feel like inner <laughs> places, external places probably, but yeah. Do you want to just kind of start us off with what we um, just read maybe with Gnosis? Can you explain what that is? Because I thought that was so fascinating and I'd never heard that word before and I had to look it up. Yeah. Yes, gnosis. So it's spelled G-N-O-S-I-S. And the idea there is it's really just a, another form of knowledge. It originates from Greek mythology, Greek language, I should say. And, and you know, we've got our mental intelligence, but there's also embodied intelligence, the, the intelligence and the knowing that comes from the body. And some might call this the feminine knowing, the feminine path, but it's available to all genders. And it's this I know that I know that I know. And oftentimes when I'm writing copy or even talking to some of my clients, I'm, I'll do a G in, you know, like, you know, you know, and instead mm-hmm. of the K, the G, you know, inviting that invitation into like, what do you know? You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so interesting. Cause I feel like something I talk to my friends about is, is that same thing, but I've never labeled it, labeled it like that, but it's like, just saying like your pussy knows something along those lines you know if you do carry pain or infection or something like that say after a partner it's like your body knows it feels like that you know what I'm saying yes yes that's it comes from the long tradition of you know basically Gnosticism which is you know uh, an off sect of Christianity um, that I actually resonate with a lot with the the wisdom that they held and kept and So the Gnostic Gospels that were actually discovered, you know, uh, I believe it was in the 60s in Egypt that had been resurrected that gave us the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of, um, and you know, later the Roman church uh, verified that Mary Magdalene was a saint, is a saint, you know, based on these Gnostic Gospels that were found. So we don't have to get into all that, but it it comes (laughs) with a rich it's a richness of a lineage. And so, um, and my teacher, yeah, all my teachers have introduced me to, to Gnosticism as well. So anyway. That is really rad. I actually haven't done like a really deep dive into Mary Magdalene or like any of that lineage, I guess, of like understanding, but that is when you say Egypt, that perks my ears up right away because it's been calling me. I, I haven't really talked about it at all, but, um, it's been calling me personally for probably the last two years and I just haven't got myself there yet, but it is on the list because I feel that I guess richness and spirituality, especially just yeah. like 
for women and, but for everyone, you know? Absolutely. It would make sense that you would feel called there. You know, there's, <laughs> you know, without really knowing everything, I surely don't, but it does feel like there is a, an awakening of remembering the feminine, the things that may have been buried for 20, not 20, 2000 years. Um, and a lot of that or, you know, originated in Egypt and yeah. I, we, again, we could get into it, but you know, I'm not sure. That's where we want to go. I mean, I don't mind. We can hit all the, all the nuggets. It's just funny too, because I remember growing up like in seventh grade, we did a whole section on Egypt, you know, like yeah. you just do yeah. in school. But I was so obsessed that I thought I was going to be an archaeologist. Like I did all my projects on Egypt. I was quite literally obsessed with it, um, with anything like buried knowledge and like finding something, you know, that was needed to be discovered. But yeah, that's kind of the the path of the feminine is the path of like dissension into the mystery, into the unknown, into the hidden. It's it's not for the faint of heart. (laughs) No, it is not. (laughs) <laughs> and it's not surprising to me. So yeah, God bless that, that, you know, that journey for you. And uh, I too feel called to Egypt. I feel very called to Africa and mm. um, I know it's a whole continent. There's many countries, but um, yeah, it's just, well, we shall see. It's, you know, and to speak about Egypt here, I, I would be really speaking out of my depth, um, but there's, there's enough that I'm tracking there that I could skim the surface good enough. <laughs> Totally. No, we can just leave it at that. That is so perfect. I'm so intrigued though. Um, I want to hear more about your V practice because, okay. So let me also give a little more context to the listeners because MC and I met in Sedona, which is also just a really other lovely place, magical vortex, very spiritual. Um, and we met at a mutual friend's birthday party. Shout out Katie Kasten. (laughs) And from the get go, we just, sat down, plunked it down on the couch and just got in to yeah. it. And it was funny because Katie did tell me, you know, you're going to love MC. And I was like, I'm sure I will. And then I surely did. <laughs> but yeah, we got to talking a little bit about what it was that we both did. And I was just so curious to hear more about V and how you developed it. Like, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, just, mm-hmm. yeah, everything with with that. Yeah, I'm I'm so passionate about this this process. I love that it's called V. It kind of came to me about eight years ago, actually. And you know, I don't know for any creators out there, it it came to me, and I I knew what it was wanted to be, and yet I I now see in hindsight that I got to actually go through the curriculum of it and become the embodiment of what it was I was attempting to facilitate and teach and. Um, it's so funny, you know, we can always think we're playing small, we're not doing the thing. And I think there's also another piece that's not as most spoken about, which is like as facilitators and as guides and teachers, there often is times where you're like, I know I need to get my own medicine first. This medicine gets to be received by me deeply. And when the time is right, I will share it when that feels with an integrity and, you know, that I really have something to offer. So I was able to let go of that. But yes, it came eight years ago. Um, you know, in a specific moment, I had actually found myself, details don't matter, but I found myself in a moment where it was time for me to kind of really be in the question of what am I here to bring forth? And I set the space, I set the ceremony, I did the thing, I called in the prayers. I really, you know, was in the listening and babe, I got one of these huge pieces of paper out and out a flowed a big V with a period, you know, it was just like, thoop. And I was like, what is this? And then the next things that come is vulva, voice, vagus nerve. And I was like, what? Um, and I was shown that it is specifically my area of fascination right now really is in the voice. And if you want to call it the throat center, the voice, like what's happening there and how to really support myself and other women into dislodging the holding that we have in our pelvic floors. And as you know, in your your this is what you do. So V is essentially, sorry. So that's kind of what the V stands for. Um, but really with a primary focus on sound and voice and the fifth chakra. So that V kind of represents, you know, we're really kind of really drawing attention there because I've been teaching 
movement and yoga and dance for at this point 15 years and the thing that I have found that I really have wanted to see more of is when we are in our movement practice literally in any position and pose singing toning sounding and in that in doing so we're not only you know stimulating the vagus nerve which travels throughout the entire body helping to tell the body hey it's okay to let go and open up and it's safe uh but simultaneously we're relaxing this the jaw you know and we're we're affirming like it said in the bio but this idea of like and we all you know i know you track this but there's a very significant more than i even know at the moment but it continually is revealed to me the connection between our pelvic bowls and our our throats and our voices and our jaw and um yes yeah. so i wanted to create a practice that you know essentially put together all the things that we as women kind of quote know we should be doing but for whatever reason we just we just don't get around to doing it and i was like let me just put the best of everything I know from somatics, from Tantra, from breath, from sound, from yoga, from dance, from sensuality, and just kind of throw it in there in a sequence that is engaging and sexy and fun, but it's deep. And um, yeah, essentially will yeah, help tune our instrument, you know, of these bodies. Yeah. It, feel, it feels potent as fuck. That's all I have to say about that. Like, it just, it feels as you talk about it, I'm like, I'm sure what I'm painting in my head, um, isn't exactly it, but tell me if I'm, if I'm off base here, because you teach this live, right? I teach it live here in Austin and soon to be in, you know, in other places, maybe retreats, but really, I think it wants to become maybe a, this is just between you. Well, I guess it's not just between you and I. A certification, you know, something that other practitioners can take and use these sequences and really support other, you know, do it with other people. So we'll see, you know, God willing. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can absolutely see it being something like that for sure. But I was almost imagining because I have friends who they teach live, but there's no platform for them or like no access to like all their past classes, which saddens me sometimes. But also it's like, okay, yeah, having like a little library or something like that. I was wondering if you had that. But um, yeah, I could picture it just like dark room, red lights, like women just getting sweaty and moving together, not really caring. Because I know a lot of people who are afraid also to go to yoga to be judged. It's like you don't go to these classes to be self or concerned with how other people are seeing you. You're so immersed in your own thing that it feels yeah. still very, very personal and deep, like you said. And yeah, just potent because you are combining a lot of these different modalities or different frameworks together. So I'm picturing like a 60 minute flow kind of movement class with all these sounds, with all these other uh, sensual kind of like awakening things, like lighting up the senses is what I'm thinking too. You're you're right on the money. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it is. And, and in fact, that, that dark space is really intentional, you know, exactly to your point, just really, if needed, even adding that element of it's dark. So to allow, you know, the woman to go to the edge of her expression on her mat, which, you know, and whatever that may look like or sound like, or feel like, um, without any concern, you know? And so it's right. almost so dark, like it's hard to see. I had to, I bring my candles and we do our thing, you know? Um, and then the sound is just so fascinating to me, how sound and curating a playlist that really like informs the body and how to move. It does a lot of the work as well. So that's really fun. Oh, yeah. I'm sure putting together music yeah. is really incredible. I'm curious what kind of music you lean towards. And then for sounding yourself, like what yeah. are those tones? Like, are you hitting all kind of, like, I'm imagining the sacral or not sacral, but um, the chakra sounds yeah. and all that. I can't be honest. I have never been able, you know, I've like Googled all of that and tried to get into it. It's like, ram, ram, and I, you know, <laughs> hold on. I, I want to be clear. It's never, it's never, I'm never connected to it, you know, yeah, for me. That's fair. Um, with that said, there are a sequence, there are a set of sounds that have either come through mm-hmm. as like, these are the ones. So at the very beginning of class, for instance, uh, we'll draw a long, deep breath. We actually arrive for like 10 minutes. You actually take time to arrive on your backs. And during that time, we'll do a long in breath and a long hold at the top, which is just exquisite and fun. And on the exhale, we'll do um, for the root and the 
base of the pelvic bowl will do the and just like bringing aware and everyone's in it like we are all just like the you know and then yes we we move it up to the heart you know and then that's va and then we go up to the upper if you want to call them upper chakras upper centers and that's they and the idea is just to start the class with bringing sound in to actually let's connect and embody these places because this this yeah yeah, I, I kind of love that they all start with V too. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you that, that was intentional. I'm sure it was because everything you do is so intentional. Um, but yeah, almost like hitting all these different syllables. Yeah. Yet also, I'm also assuming that you're making as much like primal animalistic like sound. Like grunting, tribal. sounding. The, the idea is this. It's like it's helping us to strip away, like it said, like it's just any any mental energy and coming back into our naturalness, you know, a concept that really fundamentally changed my life. This is not the way I've always been. I, there was a time in my life in which I was very like, um, disembodied for sure. But just, you know, basically at a very early age, I cut off from the neck down because, you know, growing up in this, in, I, I'm so grateful for where I grew up, but having been born in a Christian and kind of conservative purity culture, I got the message really quickly that, my body was bad and being born female was bad. And, you know, it felt it like, and I, so many people who I believe have been on your podcast, there's a similar through line of like, okay, so how do we move through this? And what that resulted to for me was at, you know, just really navigating the world from my head up or neck up being very intelligent, you know, you know, and figuring out very quickly what was required of me. Um, yeah. And that landed me at age 23 in a sexless marriage that I had waited to have sex, you know, until I was married. And now it's a sexless marriage. Now my hair is falling out. Now my period's gone. I'm 25. And I'm like, this is, this is, I don't, I, I was very depressed and riddled with anxiety. And that's when I found my teachers of embodiment. And I thought they were going to help me. It was like the feminine art of weight loss. Cause I was obsessed with losing weight. Um, and she tricked me. She like put me in a tantra immersion. <laughs> And I next thing I know, I'm like, you know, 25, this is 15 years ago. I'm like crawling around on the floor in New York City with a bunch of women with an eye mask on. And this is like my path towards healing. And she taught me, this is Jenna LaFlem. She taught me a principle that radically changed my life. And she taught me the principle of erotic innocence. And essentially that's just to say that really there's, there's value in considering that our bodies are animals and that she is our true one and only till death do us part. And what it might, and so I began that long path of starting to heal my relationship with my animal. And one of those pieces was, is that really she's not bad or wrong or sinful. Actually, you know, it, just like an animal in nature who feels drawn towards that, which feels good, pleasure, like, you know, belly open on a rock in the Sahara desert, like, you know, just it's, it's natural. It's her naturalness and therefore it's her erotic innocence. And so erotic innocence is like the depth of what I preach inside this is everything I create is to help us all so these environments of v is like yeah your naturalness whatever it is so yeah primal sounds and movement and it, it yeah yeah it's great yeah. I love that thank you for bringing that up because that is a huge huge piece I think that people it, it's like not even just a a way of thinking or a way of being it is like um it's a quality like it's a it's a quality to reclaim back in yeah. yourself yeah. that I think a lot of people like in my practice too they need to come to terms with all the things that kind of shut that down or put that away yeah. Yeah. and letting it be an innocent curiosity with exploring or releasing and yeah, it's funny. I do have this common thread with the people that. <laughs> Come on. It's like, oh, there's a lot of, you know, people who've experienced religious, you know, suppression of, to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's funny. I talked to a, an energy reader 2020 August, and she told me because I asked her questions about my future partner, blah, 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 love, and also career. Like I was very curious about where obviously everyone was headed or where I was headed, I should say. Um, yeah. Because that stage in everyone's life was hectic. And she said like religious trauma was going to be one of the things for me. And I'm like, that's very fascinating because I definitely carry a little bit of that or carried 
a little bit of that. So I think I am drawn to people who have had certain experiences and found their own way through. And that's who I feel like have been coming on the podcast this season in particular. Um, so it's very amazing to hear. And I love that you found your teacher and that she ignited that, that peace within you. And I love that you're connecting it to like primal animal body, you know? Yeah. Um, but I do also just think like of this like childlike innocence, which they also just preach in church too, you know, like having a childlike love yes. and innocence for the divine and, you know, just anything greater than you. Yeah. yeah so that's beautiful. I love that. You know, I, I do, I see two parts of innocence that live with in, in our bodies. One is the innocence of our, like essentially our lower body, our sex, our love, our passion, our, you know, that which is in the pelvic bowl and lives there. There's, it's all, you know, the word erotic comes from it's eros, you know, life force energy. It's neither good nor bad or here nor there, you know, it is just that which animates life and to reclaim that as sacred and um, yeah, and good. Never have we ever been separate. Never have we ever been bad or wrong. I mean, it's just the illusion that I believe is the underpinnings of all the distortion that's happening right now is the belief that we are separate from God, the belief that we are separate from life, the belief that we're separate for love, you know, it's like, and that can live. And of course, what happens that shame and then all of this. So the innocence, restoring the innocence of our sex, the innocence of, you know, who we are naturally, our expression and in the heart, oh my gosh, the innocent, uh, the innocence of our hearts. And in that lives, you know, the inner child is a huge part of the work that I do. And I'll just say, you know, my, my ultimate healing real, I mean, I mean, it's, we keep going, but a big part of my journey was when I was able to reconnect my heart with my sex. Cause I, after my Christian kind of that marriage didn't end up working out unknowingly, I, I started to pursue, okay, who am I as a sexual woman? Let me have sex. And, and, you know, at the time we thought it was liberated and, you know, great. And it was in its own way. And I'm glad that I did it. And yet for many years, I was engaging in sex without my heart as part of the mix, you know, um, not truly. Yeah. And so it was when I merged those two. Um, and that's what I just, I, yeah. I'm also curious. Something. How, how did you feel before you merged the two? Like, were you feeling more of that? kind of like pain or were you having any physical symptoms like you were with in the marriage? I would just say, um, no, I've never, fortunately, I've never had a lot of physical symptoms. I think I honestly, the before and after that I noticed, and this came through really healing some stuff with, um, you know, a lot of healing with the father and the, all of it, you know? Oh yeah. Um, forgiveness, forgiveness <laughs> of everything. Um, what I noticed the, the the real before and after for me with that was uh, the quality of the partner I attracted, you know, I mean, I, before mm -hmm. that was really finding myself in really dysfunctional, you know, relationships with patterns that were really painful, that the emotional pain of uh, really unavailable men, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when I finally was, I was available, my, you know, when my heart really came online and I um, really could feel that like, the handshake between my inner child and my sex. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's like, I'm going to care for you and you're going to care for me. And like, you matter in this equation, you matter period to my heart, you know? And so here's moving forward. I'm going to consider you in this. And if there's not a heart connection, then, you know, we're not going to move forward. And that's just the way, you know, so anyway, I called him my partner after that, you know, and that was a pretty big, pretty big moment. Mm. Wait, I want to hear more about that. <laughs> Calling in your partner. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's just such the sweetness, you know? Mm -hmm. um, oh, my gosh. You know, I, yeah. So, I mean, it literally kind of happened like that. I had been doing a lot of work. And we, I, it was about two years ago, a year and a half ago is when I met Matt. And um, the experience between he and I is that of, real true love. And that's been my experience with our connection. Mm. Um, I, I would be amiss to not say that actually about a year prior to meeting him, I just was going about my normal business, just minding my own business here. And it was like a Tuesday and I was taking a bath at my house. And honestly, and we, 
I, I'm so surprised at the time. I was like, what is happening? I'm in the bath and I'm like, I'm going to put on a worship song from like circa 2000. And um, yeah, I, I grew up in the church and actually I had always had a profound connection with Christ, with Jesus. And yet um, in order to become embodied, I felt like I had to just release the baton of my like, or the label of my Christian. It didn't give me, th those principles didn't give me what I required to get into my body. And that's when I found my teacher, Jenna. And I was like, I hope I come back. You know, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to reconcile. You know, I love myself. I'm a woman who doesn't apologize for being a woman. And does Jesus fit into this? I don't know. Anyway. Um, and yeah, I get, about two years ago or whatever it was at this time, I was in the bath and I just spontaneously was put on this song and I spontaneously had a full on energetic, um, I was going to say orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was expecting I was like orgasm um baptism I basically baptized myself oh. I gave my life completely over to God into which ultimately now I see I gave my life to myself my not my will but your will be done the higher will for my life mm. it was an absolute surrender into that and um and I kept repeating this verse this bible verse that was like um I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me the life I live in the body I live by faith in the one who loved me and gave himself for me which has got a lot of stuff and I understand anyone listen like with religious but it just was repeating this is a verse that I hadn't thought of in years and I'm just like allowing it to wash over me and um it was true. And I was like, I am my beloved's and my beloved's is mine. And I, I uttered a prayer in that moment. And I said, I am available. I know what love is as a, I, I have always known what love is because my pursuit in life has always been God, you know, and what, who is God and what is this? And that continually continues to reveal itself as the way more than a big man with a beard upstairs, you know, <laughs> but my pursuit of knowing God has always been true. And so in that moment, Brittany, I was like, I know love. This I know. This is love. And I am yours and you are mine. And if there is a man who can come in and be almost a translucent experience, meaning I feel the love of I, I, it, this love I'm available for. And if not, I truly am okay. And that, that was a true prayer that I prayed. And then I got up and I was like, all right, time to go to bed. But now I see looking back, everything began to ch change in my life. Wow. It was like, rapid speed of let's get the things let's get you into alignment and then let's start to look at the things that are holding you back and then continuing to have you choose um yeah less than what you what what's true so yeah that's and so then Matt came in and so Matt comes in as a um yeah in my experience as a reflection of the love that I gave myself and as cheesy as that sounds it's no. and as a reflection of really Yes, yeah, surrendering to the higher will of my life, which looked like letting go of a lot of stuff. So, so many of us have gone through this. I thank you so much for sharing that because I feel like to some that might be like oh, kind of a funny thing, but that feels like a really <laughs> sacred moment that you just shared, like your moment yeah. in the bathtub because that, yeah, that's huge. And I, I feel like I can relate a lot to this separation that you had to have. And then kind of this reconnection and again, like back into spirituality and everything. I don't think people um, that have listened to the podcast maybe know, but I feel like I'm closer to God than I had ever been in the past. And I think it is through this, yeah, just this like process of letting go of what doesn't feel true and yeah. Yeah, staying really committed to what you're saying, like love. It it's all it's all that it is. Like God is love. Love is God. Like and yeah. how beautiful that Matt is that just reflection of what you put into yourself. And yeah. I can totally relate to that too. There's a lot of shit that I did feel like I moved through before um being available even for James, you know? Yeah. All of the cliches ended up being kind of like true, you know, it's like, you gotta let, you know, <laughs> like you gotta love yes. yourself first before you find love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. It's a, it's a courageous path. Yeah. The one of, uh, this is a de devotional path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I know you said, so like V came to you eight years ago, oh, and sure. yeah. this like 
baptism, we'll just call it the baptism yes, came around two years ago, but I'm so curious, like what that, like what that overlapping kind of experience looked like with you integrating all of this stuff and maybe like taking on your teacher's um, trainings or whatever it was, like how that looked in your life at that point too. You mean teaching V? I guess. Yeah. Or like, yeah. When did you start like teaching it or like putting it together, like piecing it with the woman? And like, obviously it's probably not what it looks like. Yeah. Now. When all of that happened, I was, I was actually doing consulting. I was being called forth inside of some like really large organizations and helping serve as really operations and everything else, usually for startups, but sometimes for pretty well-established companies. And so I was operating in this, um, it wasn't just hyper-masculine. I have a part of me that really understands business and organizational, you know, culture and how to make things run better and all of this. So I was doing all of that at this time. And uh, those are, those are the things that actually got to be, um, really like I look at it like a tree and like just with the love of my soul just came and sliced off the branches and really dramatically actually so like be careful when you get you know <laughs> give your life to yourself essentially you're the reason we came here now I see it's like I gave my life to God yes but it's not a religious thing I gave my life to the, the thing I've always known I'm here to do from being a child what I've always felt I'm here to do I'm here for love I'm here for freedom and that looks for me like I am a teacher. There's a, there's an aspect of me that's a teacher. So me playing the role of operations as much as I love business, it was it was a quasi a quasi role for me. So all that to say, I got handed a big humble pie. I mean, really, like my sole source of income lost, gone, and um, yay, this is fun. You know, I just met Matt, and this whole thing happened, and. Um, Matt asked me, it was about a month into our meeting. And he goes, you know, I never really thought that this was really like the thing you were here to do. And what, what are you here? And I was like, teaching movement, you know, and dance and sound. And I just shared with him. I just spilled out the vision that I had been given eight years ago that of course I all throughout the consulting, I'd been teaching movement, doing coaching, but like I'd mainly been doing consulting. And so anyway, um, and it was then that he, he, I just deep respect for what a partnership can do. He's held so much space for me to roll my mat out again and be in the listening. And so, you know, whatever the art is for us, it's like coming home to that art and coming home to that uh, expression where it feels like uh, we were born to do it. And for me, when it comes to teaching movement and sound and helping a woman really get that access into her body, which I love what you said, you know, God more. Yeah. The more we are embodied, the more we know God, it's like, there's a whole surface area here to know God, not just from the head. You know, there's this whole, it's the prayer. The prayer is the dance, the breath, mm. the sex, the love. It's like, and it's, it's okay. How do we, how do we move through the frozenness of the numbness? I mean, for me, that's my orientation was numb and frozen. So, you know, that's why sounding and toning is so good for anyone who's numb and frozen because it helps to get in the body, you know, like I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I'm going to be a little bit more dramatic than I think I should be because I've been so frozen for so long. Cause I've been shut down, you know? Anyway, yeah. that's a lot of things, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you definitely need to like break through the ice a little bit, especially if you've been yeah. feeling so stuck, you know what I mean? And um, oh, I love what you just said though. And it gave me a visual and a questioning, I guess, like with prayer and the dance and the sex. And it's like, how you do one thing is how you do all. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think about times where when I used to be little, prayer, you know, they tell you how to kind of structure it. But I definitely remember those times where like, you're just diving into your prayer and you're just asking, 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 because you thought you kind of deserved what you were asking for. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like a taking, like you're taking kind of from God. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, okay, no, you should start with gratitude, you know, say your thanks, say your thanks, say your thanks. And then at the end you ask. And then I remember learning way down the line, you know, in my twenties with yoga and meditation, it's like, oh, prayer is when you ask and meditation is when you listen and you'll receive an answer, whether that's a nothing or a no, or here it is, you know, but I just imagine people too, like in the movement, it's like, 
in the movement and or in like a pleasure practice are you taking are you making your body do something that it doesn't necessarily want to are you forcing it into shapes it doesn't want to be in or are you actually giving it your breath like are you giving it time are you giving it spaciousness to just be what it needs to be so that I can kind of like reach these edges and move and then expand into what it can be yeah I don't know, I'm just dropping that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, in other words, it sounds like, yeah, are you really surrendering into the endless mystery? You know, this as the feminine, we have the ability to really, and I don't mean a woman. I mean the feminine hat. It wants to go. It wants to melt back into the into the the mystery, the void. You know, and I experience dance and movement as just that. And that's my prayer. It can be a form of my prayer where words won't do. It's like, let me actually express this. And this is, you know, it's really wonderful to teach women how to do this. You know, those emotions and those feelings, that grief, that longing, it, letting it be expressed through the entirety of the body, surrendering into the fullness of these emotions. And, and instead of being kind of victimized by them, which I, for 15 years of my life, or 29 years of my life, I was a victim of my emotional state until I learned how to actually alchemize and work with all of the intensity of what it is to be alive and then allow it to serve my turn on. You know, and that, I mean, so that's the prayer. It's like, I won't be victimized by this grief and, and God bless grief. I'm just, or I won't be victimized by this longing, this desire. I'm actually going to turn into it. And as my form of prayer, I'm going to dance with it using breath, sound and movement and just allow it to actually, yeah, dropping the story of I don't have what I want. Now I'm actually just dancing with the in, amazing amount of resource I have because I really want that thing. Okay. So how do I like, you know, anyway, I'm talking about alchemy now and how to alchemize these. <laughs> yeah. and girl, you're speaking my language. You're yeah, speaking my language because, okay. Yeah. I I'm having a, a second round of vaginal alchemy, which is my little Come on. thing. Yeah. It's all online guided. Cause like you're saying, you know, you, the prayer the prayer of like with movement, same thing, like I was saying with pleasure, with self-touch just in general, it doesn't have to be about extracting pleasure from yourself, right? It is about diving into the depths and feeling what's there, allowing it to be, acknowledging it, right? It's like, yeah, God bless grief. Grief lives in our tissues too for every maybe past, I don't know, boundary rupture or sexual experience that wasn't like serving us in any way. Um, but yeah, it's to take all those emotions and then alchemize it, feel and breathe into the tissues, like let the blood flow come and wash away what doesn't need to be there anymore. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, it yeah. is special, special alchemy. I love it. It's so special. With... God bless. <laughs> My teacher, her name's Jamie Thompson. I, you know, I've had some really incredible teachers of all this work. Yeah. So it's just, it really, um, yeah, it helps to, it's so good to have the frameworks. And so I can imagine even, even in listening to this, it's like, all right, that might be like way, you know, PhD level for some women, like what I'm going to alchemize my, <laughs> you know, and it really is simple though. It's using the language of the body, original language, you know, so anywhere in which, you know, when there's anxiety that's present or grief or longing or desire or unmet satisfaction, like if we can just even for 10 seconds, stay more alive and present inside of that and bring breath, sound, movement and touch, you know, and we know there's a memory of how to do that. And in doing so things that begin to open and, you know, shift. And then, you know, how dare we, we use those feelings of shame and anxiety and all this for our actual turn on. And that's right. when we really mastered the key of life, you know, we're like, shit. oh my God, turn it into a kink of some kind, <laughs> turn it into a kink, existential kink. If anyone's tracking this Dude. and you want to be like existential kink is it exactly. I literally that's started it. reading it this past <gasps> week, rereading no it, rereading it. Yeah. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Me too. About really? two weeks. Yeah. Dude. So it might be at the top of my awareness. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this, when I say before I called James in that I was doing like the work, blah, 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 blah. I was uh -huh. doing the stuff out of this book. I was doing like deepest fear inventory, did it for the 21 days. Probably it's longer. so potent. I'm so glad we landed on that. Cause that's a practical thing that people can go. And it's just one of the best. 
yeah, it yeah, yeah, summarizes yeah. it so beautifully. Absolutely. And then coming into the container with you and actually getting into the physical, I think what you do is so, so potent because when I finally had my experience, um, I had so much shame that I couldn't even put my, um, so I just lit a thing. Oh, I love I it. Couldn't even, I couldn't even put my, my fingers inside of my vulva, inside of my vagina. When I would, I would feel extreme disgust, extreme and nausea which is a sign of the nervous system I understand now regulating. And, and, but the point is through guidance of a teacher like you, I was able to get to the place very slowly and gently and with love and patience and all that, where I could insert my fingers and then eventually a cervical wand. And it's that work having an, what's an interoception, having the ability to connect. This is my cervix. Mm-hmm. Now, every woman deserves that. Every woman deserves it. And it makes, it makes sense to me that it's been kept from us because it's where our power exists. If you've wondered who am I, where am I? You're in, I believe a large part of where you is, is in your cervix. And so <laughs> you can get in there and touch it and be with it and tone with it and feel it. This is what I do in V and this is what you do. You, but after I started doing my cervical wand work, V took a whole nother depth because I actually was like, oh, this is where Eros, this is where my essence comes in, you know? And so that's all I'm trying to do inside of V is like, let's strip away the stress and the holding and the control by whatever means necessary, look and sound however you want so that we can get to that spot where you will like the origin of your seat, the seat of your throne. Mm-hmm. So this cervical work slept on, it slept it's- on left on. Oh my God. Let me tell you. Yeah. I I hope that people hear this and are like more inspired and more curious because it would be just such, I mean, for lack of a better term, it'd be such a shame for people to let their shame get in the way of finding this point in their body, enlivening themselves into who they're meant to be like full range. I, I, I like full range chickens. Sure. But full range womanhood, full range feminine, full range masculine, full range human, like that is what I want to experience on this planet for this lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. And I think I fell in love with you on that couch. I was like, I I really get that you are a woman on a mission devoted to being the best at what you do and to really serving one woman at a time if necessary to find this and to to find herself inside of herself. And then it's like, next, (laughs) next. That's what I feel for me. We're just going to, we're just going (laughs) to keep talking about it on here. We're going to keep doing the in-person. We're going to keep doing the, (laughs) the one-on-one, the group stuff like you're doing. I mean, thank you so much for saying that. And I see the exact same in you, like seems like, like attracts like, um, I just, I love you and the work that you're doing and I cannot wait. Okay. So I have a friend, you know, her, Robin, she's coming to Austin. So we got to do some kind of Austin get together. And I would love to take a class with you. Oh, yes. I would literally, yes. I'd carve out the time. Off. Popping off. Yes. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. And so many badass women are attracted to it. It's really cool to see just the quality and the caliber of the women who are coming. So I'm not slowing down. It's a whole mission to bring forward. But just like you, it's like, all right, this is what we're here to do. This is what you're meant to do. Yeah. I'm, I know. It's like, all right. It's the life's work, baby. It's the life's work. And I mean, (laughs) you are just so multi-talented though, like beside the consulting stuff, like all the stuff that you're doing with the somatic work and the coaching and the psychedelic embodiment, like all of that is maybe we save that for another episode, but (laughs) yes, yes, yes. I'm very fascinated with the intersection there and what's possible, especially in the psychedelic space and what's happening right now and how I uh, really, my experience has been that, that actually the more that we support our, our body and the soma, like doing the somatic practices, then you might, if it makes sense to engage with psychedelics, oh my gosh, mm. the actual intersection of the two is very fascinating to me. I, I mean, I could absolutely see that. I, I, yeah. fi- I find it really interesting though, that do or do you notice that people are accessing psychedelics first before getting into the body most of the time when they come to meet you? Yeah. And, 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 um, you mean that they're doing psychedelics before, before engaging in like somatic work or even psychedelic work with you? 
Yes. And there's no problem in that. Um, I can, one of the beautiful things about the psychedelic space, if held and done properly, it actually can help you deeply to get into your body. It can help Mm -hmm. to give you a reference point for what actually it feels like to be in your body. Cause this can be a concept for a lot of people. And that's what I think is so powerful in the use case, like the use for psychedelics. Um, if you're experiencing again, you know, patterns that you don't want or anxiety, um, I've seen that it can be something that is like, oh, this is a reference point. And then you can begin to, to easily orient around that because you've had it in your body and felt it. Right. So I don't want to at all say that it's, you know, you need to get to a point where um, it's just also very exciting that if if you are in this space and and you haven't yet, or you want to continue to to utilize that as one tool, one tool of the many tools that we have, um, it can be really exciting to do the deeper you go, the deeper you go, the deeper you go. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. 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 The deeper you go, the deeper you go. Makes a hundred percent (laughs) sense. You go as deep as you want. (laughs) Yes. 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 Yeah. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that for now. Yes. Stay tuned for episode two. Yes, exactly. We have a part two coming. Don't you worry. Um, well, where can everyone find you, uh, and access you, reach your magic, see you in person, please find me. Yes. Come say hi. Um, you know, Instagram is MC Charette. Um, the V is V sound and movement. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's on Instagram. And then my website is MC Charette.com, which may be hard to spell, but hopefully they can find it and it'll be in the show notes for sure. Too. Yeah, I would love to say hi and just send me a message and I'd love to just meet people on this path for sure. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. If anyone wants to round up and go to Austin, let me know. Holler and we'll make a plan and go see you. Uh, Thank you so much for being here, MC. Love you so much. And so proud of you and all the work you're doing. Thank you. Same to you. It's so meaningful what you're doing. And I just see you and I'm glad you exist. The integrity that you embody in the work that you do, truly. Mm, Thank you so much. Love you. Love you too. (laughs) Hey, getting naked. Okay. <laughs> okay. And bye, bye. everyone. <laughs>